I always wanted to go to Benedictine High School. Because they had just won their first championship in 48, and they tied for another championship in 50 for the city. And I just wanted to be on that team. I went out for freshman football. Well, first thing, first two weeks, I worked hard with that freshman team, you know, and when the list went up for those who made the team, my name wasn't on it. I was cut. It's a complete surprise. It's a complete surprise that I was not a member of the active team. And so I, I went home rather dejected. But I never lost, I never lost hope, you know. I said, I gotta do something because I wanna play in that football team next year. I was the youngest person out there because I started school a year early and when I left uh, uh, St. Winston's last, I was only 13 years old, three months before that I turned 13. And so I played with these guys that are, you know, well into their 14th year. So that was one of the things I had to do is to can become more mature too during that year. But I, I did, you know, it was one of those things where I did take up and get involved as much as I could in the Benedictine spirit and the Benedictine program so that I could be successful. And I was, I was on the honor roll and do everything I could in the uh, gymnasium because we used to have great gym classes. I, I was rather shy, I was rather shy, and I really didn't have a, a lot of self-confidence. Yeah, it was one of those things where I, I always felt inferior, even when we got to the uh, football and we were going one-on-one -on -one with somebody, you know. I always felt that, how can I, how can I beat this guy? You know, how can I, how can I beat this guy? And then I, then I, people were telling me, don't remember, if you think it hurts you, Remember, when you hit him, it hurts him too. I said, oh, that's right, that's right. And so I, so I start hitting a little bit harder. And I think those, those kind of things, those kind of things helped me out. So I was a different person after my freshman year. I was different, now I was 14 years old. <laughs> I was getting a little bit older too, you know. You know, football, hitting somebody, you know, you're a little bit tentative, you know. And uh, it's one of those things that I grew out of that. And I think I grew out of that because of the encouragement I got from the, from the Benedictine teachers. Because at that time, uh, uh, you know, 80% of our faculty were, were the monks. I got to know them and they got to know me and uh, they always had words of encouragement. My Greek teacher, my Greek teacher was Father Morris. Father Morris, you know, <laughs> he says, he'd come, he'd, come in, he'd come in on a Monday morning after the game and he says, Grace, what, the, what do you think you're doing out there on that football field? You're supposed to be downfield blocking. You're not a traffic cop. <laughs> a lot of encouragement was negative coming out of it, but it, there was always that encouragement. You know you had their attention. You know, they had your attention, they knew who you were. So I went out, I made sure I, I worked on my speed, worked on my strength, came to the sophomore year. I was first team on the junior varsity. And then the next year, I was first team on the varsity. I played in the city championship game down at Cleveland Municipal Stadium. We beat St. Ignatius that year. My senior year, I got elected captain of the team. Can you imagine going from being cut in your freshman year to being a captain in your senior year? And what was the difference? What, how, did, how did that happen? Benedictine. One of the things that was impressed on us is that this is our home, and we need to remember, we have to love Benedictine. You know, love the school, love its history, love its faculty, love its people, you know, and love one another. And always remember that wherever you go, whatever you do, it's not just you, it's Benedictine that is acting. It's Benedictine that's doing this. It's the Benedictine spirit that, that we want to bring to the world and bring to the city and bring to, to the school itself. Every discipline was always, you know, a Benedictine man would not do that. You know, a Benedictine man wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't act that way. A Benedictine man it would, would, would talk better. A Benedictine man would always greet visitors when they're in the hallway, you know. It's, not, it's one of those things where, what does a Benedictine man do?
never give up. I didn't give up when I was cut. I didn't give up and look at how, look how God changed my life, turned my life around. And I think it's the same thing at, at Benedictine. If you're, not, if you're not doing well right away, don't give up. Just keep working at it. Just keep working at it. You should always play, do it the best you can do because I'm from Benedictine. And that's what we do there. place was life-changing for me, so much so that I made it my life, so that I could make it a life-changing place for others. This place means so much to me because it forced me to become the greatest version of myself. Benedictine didn't give up on me just because I wasn't good enough to make the freshman team. My friends, teachers and coaches didn't give up on me either. I couldn't give up on myself. I couldn't give up on me. This place has never had the most resources. It's not a place that hands you a perfect life on a golden platter. It's a place where you have to do more with less, to strive to higher heights with your back against the wall, to take the opportunities that are given to you and exceed any reasonable expectation. We're not the New York Yankees or the Dallas Cowboys. We're the Benedictine Bengals. And I learned from men like Augie Basu and Joe Rufus. They didn't win because they had all the tools. They won with the tools they had, and that was us. They got the most out of us. They were leaders of men. Jesus Christ took fishermen and made them disciples, leaders of the church, the first bishops. He was a leader of men. How's this for leaders? Benedictine is located on Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, and I'm proud proud that I was part of the community that decided to stay here in the city of Cleveland, where Benedictine monks came 100 years ago this year. This is where I learned to become a leader, and it's what I've tried to do ever since. And before I was bishop, abbot, principal, teacher, coach, bus driver, I was a man of Benedictine.